we're going to do now is we're going to wire in this push switch and we want to connect it in such a way that we can control it from our software, from what we write in our crumble code. To do this, we need to connect our switch to one of these connectors in the middle of the crumble board. If you have a look, you'll see that they're labeled A, B, C and D. So to connect the switch, we're going to take a different color crocodile lead and connect it to one end of the switch. With the other end, we're going to connect that to the connector marked A in the middle of the crumble board. Like that. So for the other end of the switch, we're going to make a connection here. And let's use a red crocodile clip. So we've connected that opposite to the, the previous connection we've just made. And then this end of the lead, we need to connect this to a positive power connector on the crumble. You'll see that earlier we connected the battery to the one on the right hand side here, but there's another power connector here on the left hand side. So connect the other end of the switch, you can see from here, to the positive connector on the crumble on the left hand side, like that. So we're now going to go back to our computer program to program some extra code to say what we want to happen when we press this button on the switch. To start with, we want to program it for the most basic of actions so that when we press the button, the motor will start and that will cause the wheel to spin. And when we let go of the button, the wheel will stop spinning. So this is the block of code that we had earlier to make the motor and the wheel turn. To get a clean start, I'm going to delete these three blocks of code here that are inside the program start. In case you've not done this before, by picking them up and dragging them away, you separate the blocks out. And by dragging them over to the left hand gray area, it actually deletes the code. This time with having a switch in our circuit, we want our code to keep checking whether or not the button on our switch is pressed down. In code, to keep checking something, we can add a forever loop. If you look down here, there's a do forever loop. So let's pick that up, drag it to the right hand side and connect it to the program start block. We then need to check if the button has been pressed. You'll see that there's an if then end if block on the bottom left hand side. But actually we want an if then else block. If the switch is pressed, then start turning the motor, else or otherwise, the motor should be stopped. That doesn't appear on these basic set of blocks, but if we go up to the top and click on the button that's labeled control, you can see that an extended set of blocks appear. This includes an if then else end if block in the middle. So we're going to pick that up and drag it over to the right hand side. This time we want to drop it inside the forever loop. We want the contents of this if block to run, i.e. we want the motor to start turning if the button on our switch is pressed. I'm going to go over to the top left hand side blocks bar again and this time click on the blue button that's labelled input output. This time we can see an extended set of blue blocks, but we need to know what the condition should be for our if statement, this hexagon inside the if statement here. But first we need to know what happens on the crumble board when the switch is pressed. The crumble can detect high or low inputs at any of the four connector points, A, B, C or D. And if you look back at our crumble board, we can see that we connected our switch to connector A. For a switch, a high input occurs when the button is pressed and a low input occurs when it is not pressed. So if we look at these blocks here on the left hand side now, you can see that we've got one that's labeled A is high. And if you look at the shape of it, you'll see that it's an elongated hexagon. That means it's appropriate to slot into our condition in the if statement on the right hand side. 
We now need to say what happens inside this if statement. So we need to tell the motor to start turning. We did this before with our previous code. There's this motor block here that says motor one will turn forwards at 75%. So we're gonna pick that up and drag that into the if statement. The only bit that's left is what to do if A isn't high, which corresponds to what to do if our button isn't pressed, if our switch isn't pressed. This time we want the motor to stop, so we can again drag a motor block over. And this time, if you remember from when we coded before, if you click where it says forward, it changes to reverse, and click once more, and it changes to stop. So make sure your crumble is still connected to your computer via the USB lead and then go over to the top left hand bar and you press the green arrow to upload the code to the crumble. So this is our crumble with the code now uploaded onto it. So we need to make sure our battery is turned on and then we control the wheel by pressing the switch that we've just inserted into the circuit. Press the switch and the wheel starts to turn. Let go of the switch and the wheel stops. So that's it, we now have a crumble circuit with the battery inserted, a motor and a wheel and our push button switch.